This video was brought to you by Nebula. Germany is divided. In fact, there's an invisible line running through the country which splits them harder than politics, religion, or even just straight geography. This is the Audi Equator. With more than 10,000 stores in 18 countries, Audi is famous around the world for their low prices, knockoff brands, and frankly, weird selection of products. However, the story isn't quite as simple as you might think. Because depending on where you live in the world, you might be a little confused by this Audi logo, and this one might just feel more familiar to you. That's because Audi doesn't just have two different logos, but it's actually two completely separate companies. One found in the north of Germany and the other in the south. So we went to Germany to uncover what's really going on. I'm currently in the city of Mulheim, Germany, and behind me is an Audi store, more specifically an Audi Sud store. But if we go just a few miles down the road, across the border in the city of Essen, we find this store, Audi Nord. So what's going on here? Why are there two separate companies with the same name? To understand that, let's rewind a little. Well, 110 years, to 1913, when a woman called Anna Albrecht opened a small shop in a suburb of Essen. Now, unfortunately, that original shop doesn't exist anymore, and even the modern Audi which replaced it closed in 2020, which was admittedly a little underwhelming when we planned our trip to Germany. But regardless of where the store actually was, and whether you can visit today, it was a relatively successful shop. So she continued to run the shop while raising her children, Carl and Theo. Now, these two boys were always involved in the business, with Theo completing an apprenticeship at the store and Carl working at a local delicatessen. After World War II, though, the two boys took over the business and oversaw the beginning of the business's growth, with the brothers owning 13 stores in the Ruhr Valley by the end of the decade. Now, the brothers had a very clear vision for the brand. They weren't trying to be the flashiest or fanciest supermarket. Instead, they aimed to appeal to the austere tone of post-war Germany. And a key part of this growth strategy was a clear focus on pricing, intentionally trying to undercut the market leaders at the time. Not only that, they were also ruthless when it came to products, quickly removing lines which didn't sell well and not stocking fresh goods which were harder to keep. As a result, the stores tended to be a lot smaller than average, and costs were cut even lower by not advertising the stores at all. This strategy clearly worked though, because just another decade later, and the brothers owned 300 stores with annual revenues of 90 million Deutschmarks, or about 200 million euros today. It was then in 1962 that the chain officially picked up the name Audi, which is actually a portmanteau of the brothers' name, Albrecht, and discount in German, giving us Al-D. However, it was around this time that things got rocky, as a disagreement emerged between the two brothers over cigarettes. Up until this point, the brothers' stores hadn't sold any cigarettes, something that Theo was keen to change, insisting that they could make more money by selling cigarettes in their stores. Carl disagreed, though, saying that stocking them would only encourage shoplifters. This disagreement was so severe that they did the unthinkable and split the company in two, with each son able to run their half of the business as they wished, with or without cigarettes. Now, splitting a company in two clearly isn't easy, but the brothers opted for a pretty pragmatic and geographical approach, with them drawing a line directly through the country, with one brother then taking everything to the north of the line and the other everything to the south. In fact, they kept things very literal with the naming too, with one half going by Audi Nord or Audi North and the other Audi Sud. Despite this divide though, initially the two companies were pretty closely linked, but by 1966 the brothers had divided enough that the two companies were entirely legally and financially separate businesses, with one continuing to operate in the north of the country and the other, unsurprisingly, in the south. 
Since then, though, both chains have grown massively, with Audi Nord now having 2,210 stores in Germany, while Audi Sud has 1,920. How have they achieved this success? Well, there are five key elements to the Audi business model. Price continues to be a key focus for the business, with them keeping costs low by offering own brand replicas of popular products. In fact, the replica's packaging is sometimes so close to the original that it's hard to tell the difference between the original brand and the dupe. People clearly like these replicas though, with the private brand products representing 90% of Audi's sales. Which is great news for Audi, because bringing production in-house clearly keeps costs down by cutting out middlemen. But it's not their only strategy for cost reduction. Audi also continues to have a much smaller range than other comparable stores, and they're still ruthless with their product lines, only keeping the most popular items and instead rotating more seasonal and weird items through their now infamous middle aisle. Audi is also ruthlessly efficient when it comes to the checkout process. Scanned items are directly returned to customer's shopping trolley, with the customers often expected to wheel the trolley to a specific bagging area after paying, rather than slowing down the till area by bagging as they go. In fact, the product is made even faster by the huge barcodes that you'll find on nearly all Audi products, so that staff can scan them as efficiently as possible. That's not the only place that staffing costs are reduced though, because when stocking shelves, products are generally stacked in their original cardboard boxes, rather than being individually merchandised on shelves. Again, this brings down the time that staff have to spend on each item, and therefore the costs. Staff are also cross-trained in a number of jobs, streamlining staff duties and allowing one individual to fulfill a number of roles. As a result, CNN reports that Audi stores can have as few as five employees in a store at any one time, and a total store's payroll can be as low as 20 people. Now, these efficiency savings do make for a slightly less clean customer experience, but they do allow the discounter to reduce prices by as much as 50% according to Audi's official figures, with independent analysis finding that Audi's prices are regularly 15 to 20% lower than other more traditional discounters. That being said, they don't tend to shout about these discounts, at least not in Germany, with the company still barely advertising in their local market and only running their first ever TV ad in 2016, when the two companies finally joined forces to run a nationwide TV promotion. Now, the same isn't true of the rest of the world, where advertising for Audi is much more common. And speaking of the rest of the world, let's take a look at how this divide extends beyond Germany because this split was only exaggerated further when Audi began to expand internationally. Audi sued started this trend, acquiring the brand Hoffler in Austria, before Audi Nord opened their first stores in Belgium and the Netherlands. Now, this continued across Europe, with the two companies slowly but surely expanding into different markets across the continent, with only one Audi showing up in each country. America is an interesting counterpoint here though, because while the rival businesses have peacefully split Europe into North and South countries, America is the only place that you'll find both competing in the same country, state, towns, cities, and even blocks. Well, kind of. That's because in 1976, Audi sued opened the doors on their first American Audi store in Iowa. But since then, Audi sued expanded to become the country's fastest growing retailer in 2022, as well as a pretty huge player generally. Now, you'll notice that Audi Nord isn't on this list at all, but trust me, they're hiding in plain sight. That's because three years later, after the opening of Audi sued in the US, Theo Albrecht, owner of Audi Nord, bought out Trader Joe's, another American supermarket. Like Audi, Trader Joe's doesn't boast many branded products, with the company focusing hard and proud of their private brand products, many of which are pretty unique and highly sought after among Trader Joe's diehard supporters. Also like Audi, Trader Joe's doesn't really do discounts, preferring to offer consistently low prices instead of coupons, sales, or loyalty cards. 
In fact, despite having quite different fan bases and reputations, the two Audi competitors in the US are actually quite similar when it comes to their business model. Zooming out though, despite Audi Nord having more stores in Germany, Audi Sud has the most stores globally, with 7,178 Suds to Nord's 5,241. But which of the two is better? Well, fortunately, we have a car and we're on the essen mulheim border, so we drove around to check out a few Audi stores on either side of the border. To make this test fair, I was joined by Ben and Tom from the TLDR team, and, well, we went shopping. Unfortunately, we don't have time to run through all of that in today's video. So if you'd like to see our review and our in-store experience more thoroughly, then you can find that exclusively on Nebula, the streaming service that we're building with a bunch of our creator friends, many of whom you likely already know and love. And if you sign up to Nebula, you'll find all of our videos ad-free and occasionally before they're even released on YouTube. On top of that, you'll also find a whole bunch of TLDR explainers available exclusively on Nebula, plus an extended version of our show, The Daily Briefing, every single weekday. As I say though, there's more than just TLDR on Nebula. There's a whole bunch of other original series that we know you'll love, like Real Life Law's Incredible Modern Conflicts, which breaks down contemporary disputes around the world, Neo's Under Exposure, which runs through contentious and controversial topics you wish you'd always know more about, and of course, Extremities. All of these things are exclusively available on Nebula, just like our extended daily briefings and a whole bunch of other exclusive TLDR content, which will never make it to YouTube. So if you want to sign up, the best way to do it is using our link in the description, which with our special discount, gets you the whole service for just a couple of pounds a month. A couple of pounds, which doesn't just go to some weird sponsor, but directly goes to educational creators like us. And that helps us out a whole lot, as does watching on Nebula more generally. So thanks for signing up and we'll see you on Nebula.